Hey guys, Rapid Start 12 here, back at it again with another lighting video. Today, I have two very interesting incandescent reflector bulbs to show you. These are Philips Spotline incandescent reflector bulbs in 50 and 75 watts. Now these I got from the Inverness Restore back in September last year. And these were actually some of the first um, light bulbs that I ever got for my lighting collection. So these are pretty neat bulbs in that they have this very interesting shape to them. And that shape actually serves a purpose. It actually makes the bulbs brighter. It produces a tighter beam and it also makes these bulbs easier to install in the fixture, which are all very interesting features. And we'll take a look at these packages in a second and you'll see where they talk about that on the packaging. But first, let's just take a second to admire this beautiful packaging here, um, this beautiful older packaging. We have this very interesting rainbow design here, you know, all this green design down here, and a very nice drawing of the bulb itself. And we have a nice informational picture there. Just very nice packaging from back in the 90s when these were made. So, Let's go ahead and move one off to the side and let's take a look at just this one here. So on the front, we have Philips 75 watt Spotline and it shows you the brightness feature down there. So yes, you do get 35% more brightness out of this bulb. Now, of course, it's not really going to be any brighter than a 75 watt incandescent. Um, what they're referring to is that this special design actually reflects more of the light out the bottom here versus a standard R20. So let's take a look at this side of the package. Same sort of top on it. And here it shows some of the features. The ultimate in spotlighting, brighter light. Patented double reflector design gives 35% more light in the beam than comparable wattage indoor reflector R20 type. It also has a tighter beam for added visual effect and it's easier to install with an exclusive computer design shape. And here we have the back. Now, you can see that I got this at the Restore for $40, but it was originally $1, wherever it came from. I don't know where that tag would have come from. Um, I wasn't alive in the 90s, but very interesting old tag. And other than that, same, you know, side as this side here. And here we have the final side where it shows 35% more light and a nice picture portraying where you would put this bulb. And there's the bottom, oops, and there's the top that actually shows the beam degree there. It also shows the 2,000 hours rated life and the fact that it has a standard base. And this packaging is actually slightly different. Now here it says new on the packaging, like this was a new thing at the time. But on this one, they've gotten rid of that. And that's because this bulb is actually a little bit older than this one. And we'll see that when we open these up. Also, we have a different price tag on this one. I like this one better than that one. Not just because it's older, but also 
I think it looks better and also is easier to read. Now, this one was also originally a dollar, but actually it was on sale from $3. So, these were some pretty pricey bulbs at the time, normally. Well, let's go ahead and take them out. Now, unfortunately, these packages are kind of beat up. Here, this one doesn't even have the top flap on it anymore. So we'll take out this bowl. So here is that one. And we also have this one. Again, missing flaps. All that stuff. So we'll put these packages off to the side and take a look at the bulbs themselves. Let's take a look at the 75 watt one first. There's the X Phillips, 75 watts, 25 degree angle, Holland, 120 volts, spot line, and there's the shape, RM19. So reflector something 19. Don't know what M would stand for, but if anyone knows, then feel free to tell me. And, um... So, also interesting, this is a 19 diameter here instead of a 20, which is interesting. And here is the 50 watt version, same thing. And unfortunately, I, this one is dead. I wrote dead on there, but you can see the filament in there. It is broken, unfortunately. This one... Filament is still good in there, um, as you can see. And also, the 50 watt run is definitely older. This one has a date code of June of 1990, I'm assuming there. Well, definitely 1990 because these wouldn't be from 2010. These are too old, and they're too new to be from 1970. So, um, this one was made in December of 1992. So, this one's a little bit newer than this one here. Um, well, anyway, we'll put this one off to the side since it's dead anyway. And we will get out our socket right here and we'll screw in this bulb. Yes, definitely very easy to install compared to a normal R20. We also have our demo today since this bulb is dimmable because it is incandescent. All incandescent bulbs are dimmable. So I'll go ahead and plug in the socket and turn off the lights, and I'll be right back. All right, I am back. Um, so let's go ahead and turn this bulb on. In three, two, one. So here's what it looks like turned on. Now right off the bat, you can see that it has a very tight light beam. Let's lift this camera up a little bit here so that you can see a little bit better. So, that's what it looks like. Um, so, here's what it looks like while well turned on. Of course, we do get a little bit of light coming out the bottom, but most of it is coming out this end. So let's take a look through here. You can see the V-shaped filament very nicely. Um, and then all of its reflections. Very cool. And again, there's the very tight beam angle. That looks pretty cool. So, let's go ahead and bring it up here. Um, I'll go ahead and Lower the camera back down to normal here. So, oop, there is what it looks like illuminating this sort of area up here. 
you know, if I wanted to accent those bulbs over there, I could do that with this bulb. And it looks pretty nice, too. Um, now, normally you'd have it a little bit farther back like that um, in a fixture. That looks pretty good. Um, so definitely does its job. Um, very nice. So let's go ahead and dim it down here. Starting with 0%. Well, 1%. Whatever. And we get a very, very tight beam. And it is also very orange in color. And very dim. So there's what it looks like. You know, you could totally accent something with that, but it is very dim. And I mean very dim. So let's bring it back up to about 50%. Don't know if you can see that very well, but now we do get some usable light out of this. Still very orange in color, but it looks nice. It looks like high pressure sodium and it's pretty bright, bright enough for accenting. Um, but let's bring it to about 75% here. We'll shine the light on the demo so you can see it. Um, and I'd say this mode is pretty good for accenting. Again, nice tight beam, pretty bright, and a nice orangish color. Um, so, we'll bring it back to full here, 100%. And we get a very nice glow and beam again. Now, I'm going to bring this up a little bit higher here. Because I'm noticing an interesting effect of the way this bulb is. Now, you know, the filament is kind of like a flattish V shape. Now, I notice, and it's especially noticeable on lower brightnesses, that there's like a hot spot, like right there, where the filament would be. Like, see it moving there? I really don't like that, but whatever. Um, it's just an effect of the way the filament is in this bulb and the way the beam is and stuff. So we'll go ahead and bring the camera back down here and we'll turn off this bulb. Now I'm going to wait for it to cool down a little bit to unscrew it. So I will be right back after I have turned the lights back on. All right, I just decided to use a paper towel to unscrew this bulb. That always works. So we will take it. Ooh, even the metal is a little bit warm. Um, but there is our 75 watt Phillips Spotline bulb. And here are the packages for our two bulbs. We'll put them in frame here as well. Well, there you have it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. Until next time.